another example. In 1915, the British Member of Parliament, Horatio Bottomley, recommended that after the war, if by chance you should discover one day in a restaurant you were being served by a German waiter, you will throw the soup in his foul face. If you find yourself sitting at the side of a German clerk, you will spill the ink pot over his foul head. Now that's strident and intolerant. <laughs> and I should have thought ridiculous and ineffective as rhetoric, even in its own time. The British literary critic Terry Eagleton described the late Kingsley Amis, extremely distinguished novelist, as a racist, anti-Semitic bore, a drink-sodden, self-hating reviler of women, gays, and liberals. Well, I think that compares fairly well with my own beginning of chapter two of The God Delusion, which is the passage most often quoted as strident or shrill. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. <laughs> now, that's the passage most often quoted as strident or shrill. It's not for me to say whether I succeeded, but my intention was closer to robust humor, <laughs> a humorous broadside, rather than shrill polemic. I don't think words like misogynistic, infanticidal, genocidal, megalomaniacal, that doesn't sound shrill to me. Something about those long words suggests that... <laughs> My wife, Lala, and I do a, a sort of double act, reading from my books when they're published. And one of the things you have to do in order to warm an audience up is to get them laughing early. And so with each book, we try to pick a humorous passage near the beginning, and we always pick that passage for the God delusion. It, it, it sort of gets a laugh. As, as, as this, this one is another one, um, which at least was my intention to be humorous, um, about Our Lady of Fatima. Um, and there you see some typical examples of Catholic kitsch. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quote from The God Delusion now. Pope John Paul II created more saints than all his predecessors of the past several centuries put together, and he had a special affinity with the Virgin Mary. His polytheistic hankerings were dramatically demonstrated in 1981 when he suffered an assassination attempt in Rome and attributed his survival to intervention by Our Lady of Fatima. A maternal hand guided the bullet. One cannot help wondering why she didn't guide it to miss him altogether. <laughs> Others might think the team of surgeons who operated on him for six hours deserved at least a share of the credit but perhaps their hands, too, were maternally guided. The relevant point is that it wasn't just Our Lady who, in the Pope's opinion, guided the bullet, but specifically Our Lady of Fatima. Presumably Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Guadeloupe, Our Lady of Medjugorje, Our Lady of Akita, Our Lady of Zaitun, Our Lady of Garabandal, and Our Lady of Nock were busy on other errands at the time. <laughs> I think that's quite funny, too. Uh, pure Monty Python. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's quite true that many people do feel very strongly about their faith and very offended if you insult it. Uh, we've come to expect never to be offended. What you say is offensive to me. The novelist Douglas Adams, to whom The God Delusion is dedicated, picked out exactly what's going on here in a wonderful speech, an impromptu speech that he made in Cambridge uh, not long before he died, and I was privileged to be there. Fortunately, somebody had the blessed good sense to switch on a tape recorder, and so this priceless hour or so of Douglas just holding forth impromptu is preserved. And I'm going to read a, a passage from it, because he, 
he puts his finger exactly on what's going on with all this offence. Religion has certain ideas at the heart of it which we call sacred or holy or whatever. What it means is, here is an idea or a notion that you're not allowed to say anything bad about. You're just not. Why not? Because you're not. <laughs> if somebody votes for a party that you don't agree with, you're free to argue about it as much as you like. Everybody will have an argument, but nobody feels aggrieved by it. If somebody thinks taxes should go up or down, you're free to have an argument about it. But on the other hand, if somebody says, I mustn't move a light switch on a Saturday, you say, I respect that. <laughs> Why should it be that it's perfectly legitimate to support the Labour Party or the Conservative Party, Republicans or Democrats, this model of economics versus that, Macintosh instead of Windows? <laughs> but to have an opinion about how the universe began, about who created the universe, no, that's holy. We are used to not challenging religious ideas, but it's very interesting how much of a furore Richard creates when he does it. Everybody gets absolutely frantic about it, because you're not allowed to say these things. Yet when you look at it rationally, there is no reason why those ideas shouldn't be as open to debate as any other, except that we've agreed somehow between us that they shouldn't be. And that agreement seems to extend to the non-religious as well as the religious. Let's raise our consciousness. What's so special about religious arguments that they should be immune to exactly the same kind of rational discussion as political or any other kind of argument? <laughs> I'm offended by some things. I'm offended by chewing gum. I'm offended by backwards-pointing baseball hats. <laughs> but I don't try to get a version of the blasphemy law passed to prevent people chewing gum or reversing their cap. So what if I'm offended? So what if my feelings are hurt? Does that give me the right to prevent others from expressing their opinions? However, is there a time when it is right to be offended? I think so, yes. We should be offended when children are denied a proper education. We should be offended when children are told they will spend eternity in hell. We should be offended when medical science, for example, stem cell research, is compromised by... Compromised, I should say, by the bigoted opinions of powerful and, above all, well-financed ignoramuses. <laughs> we should be offended when voodoo, of all kinds, is given equal weight to science. We should be offended by hymen reconstruction surgery. <laughs> we should be offended by female circumcision, euphemism for genital mutilation. This, this picture was taken in Africa, but it happens in Britain. I had a, a long conversation with a school's inspector from London, and she told me it's common. Girls are typically sent away to stay with an uncle in Bradford. We should be offended by stoning. This young Kurdish woman was stoned to death in a so-called honor killing because she wanted to marry a young man of the wrong religion. <laughs> 